Hello and welcome to the Toonami Squad Podcast Sessions. I am your host, Eric Casey, also known as Eroxstar5 on Twitter. How's it going? There is no JMB. Indeed. But uh, let, let's just go through the intro and then we'll get to that. So, uh... Sam. What? Introduce <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If this was by design, well done, guys. <laughs> Actually, I did this intentionally, so... <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. All according to the plan. Yes. I'm <laughs> Sam. I do things. Uh-huh. Next. <laughs> Who else does the Okay, I was just screwing around. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm Silver, I make the thumbs when I have the time and the Dragon Ball Z Kai previews and I think that's it about it the- these days. Oh, these are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Silver, and I look pretty. Shut up! <laughs> Eric, edit that part out. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Can't make any promises, though. This intro is getting better as it progresses. <laughs> this might be the best intro ever. Yeah. This intro is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep going. I'm, I'm Phantom, and I'm dying of laughter. And that tired for once. <laughs> I'm Gundam Unicorn 24. You know me as Brian Mori, and I'm YouTube. I upload gameplay videos and Tanari promos. Okay, with that, that was our intro. Good our job, really, guys. <laughs> really, bad. really bad intro. Awesome. <laughs> as tradition foretold. As yes. awkward and as cringy as possible. That's what we strive for here. <laughs> When we reach 100 episodes, trust us, we will never get better at this. <laughs> when we ever do get an Instagram, this is the only thing we will put. Tsunami Squad seal. Tsunami Tsunami Squad hashtag cringe. <laughs> In all caps. <laughs> well, with that, this is the uh, this is episode 14, and uh, the today's topics are going to be. Finally getting to the finale of Samurai Jack Season 5. Uh, more Attack on Titan talk. Uh, the premiere of Lupin the Third Part 4. Uh, kind of like a follow-up from our non-recorded episode from before that you'll probably either see separately or as part of this, we'll see how this goes. Uh, but you'll be hearing about our, our post uh, thoughts on E3 and the latest streaming service that is uh, jumping into the into the ring uh, in, of competition. And so, yeah, let's uh, start off with uh, what do we think of the finale of Samurai Jack season five? Beautiful. Like it. Awesome. It was good. They're... Definitely not Girl of God I, I, I feel like it should have been a two parter. Or, or at least an hour. I agree. I agree. I think it should have been an hour long finale, but for thirty minutes it was fine. Yeah. A little rush. For, but... I agree. For, for the time that they had to make the episode, it was good. You can t- you can definitely tell there were parts that were rushed. I wish that it was a two parter, that way we could have seen like what happens after I mean a bit. Yeah, but what was kinda weird was that like once Aku was defeated, like uh, and Ashi gained spoilers. Um, Ashi gained Aku's powers and everything, and she opened up a time portal. Like as soon as Jack defeated Aku right then and there, I feel like like Ashi should have like immediately disappeared. But yet she lasts just conveniently long enough to get married to Jack to ultimately just have her disappear at the end. And I get why, you know, dramatic and emotional. Um, yeah, but it feels a bit too similar to a certain giant robot anime that we know. I mean, well, there was it, a giant robot in Samurai Jack. Yeah, the thing is, like, the thing is, like, I I expected that to happen. Yeah, but I thought it was kind of weird to kind of tease us that oh, Ashi may still turn out to be alive, and then it turns out that no, she disappears. Um, 
I I thought that was kind of weird. I thought they could have done that better. Where I I just think it would have been better if they just flat out have her disappear right when Aku was defeated, and have that like tragic Ashi dying basically moment right when Aku died. Because uh, I thought it was it, it was kind of like because uh, Ashi became like a, a you know one of the favorites in the show, and to have her disappear in that way was kind of weird. And I feel like mm -hmm. it was kind of like a disservice to her as a character a little bit. Kind of teasing the audience where she may turn out to be okay and then, you know. Uh, but other than that, though, I, I thought it was, uh, I, I thought it would have been, if they did it, like, right away, I thought it would have been a pretty perfect ending, honestly. That that was really my only gripe with it. Yeah. Yep. I, I'll give season five this. It was worth the wait. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Really, so agree. many years. When does season six was start? The way. Yeah, I don't yeah. think season. Six no, is no, no. Let's let's not start a wait for season six. It took us a decade to get season five. <laughs> I don't even want to know how long a. Season hey, I blame six a, I blame a YouTuber for that. Well, I I don't even think it's that though either. Like if if Jack continues, I could see it happening if Ashi survived, but with. Um, Ashi what happened in between? Yeah, if there I, was gonna be more Jack, I'd say it'd be like what happened between those fifty years. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, like, it would have to be like a Dragon Ball Super situation where, like, that should be more like happened in the between comic era. Yeah, like, well, like, I wouldn't even say like the shit. You know, he kind of like he. I know he was with all the time portals and whatnot being destroyed, but. The guy grew like a full beard and like Haku, even he was starting to lose his mind as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to absolve in a therapy session. Yeah. All I want to know is where he got his the armor and the, the badass motorcycle. Yeah, that too. I mean that that could be something that they maybe explore as like like a prequel to season five, but I don't know. Or I, like, I mean, like as a comic, I would see that. Like, I, I would say, well, like, yeah. the only thing to really bring Jack back for maybe one more run-through is, like, kind of like a, an OVA series that either, like, takes place, like, before mm -hmm. Season 5 or some kind of, you know, <clears throat> some some kind of time frame where it takes place a little bit after. And we like just, a four-episode like, special? Of, mm -hmm. Something like that, where it's just, like, we see Jack, you know, in his... In what his, what his life would would have been like if he didn't go on the adventure really not basically acknowledging that th those events happen but basically seeing where jack is going post the the season you know the five seasons of the show you know what i mean yeah, so yeah you get like, like four well, episodes of him spending time with his with his parents you know all grown up and everything like you know maybe so some pretty much i don't know i mean I don't think it would be crazy, you know, because there's not really an antagonist, and I don't think it would make sense to introduce an antagonist to bring Jack. Like that—that's what I'm saying. Like <clears throat> to just explore Jack in his what his life would have been normal is really the only thing it can take, and the really, really is that worth exploring? Not Maybe, really. but it's it's not really something mm -hmm. that the real know, quit. The real question is: Is he still immortal? Well, I don't. No, I don't think it was that. No. I. I don't think. I don't think it was. No, I don't think he was immortal. It was just his body just wasn't aging. Time just didn't affect him because it was kind of like, you know, he didn't belong in that time, so it, time didn't affect him really. But <laughs> I don't. I don't think it was that he was immortal, because he could have died if he got. I mean, if well, he was yeah. immortal, he would. You know, that stab in the the side and everything wouldn't have affected him. Which kind of yeah. it didn't, but still. It just hurt. Still. Basically, <laughs> immortal to age. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. But not to pain. But that would mean that as long as no one stabs him to death, he could just live on. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. And that's my real question because the final episode never didn't answer that part. Well, I, I think it's. I think so. It, I think it just. It, Leaves it up to interpretation where it's like he's back in his normal time now, so he will age properly now. You know, because now he's back in the time that he's supposed to be in, you know? 
I hope so because then I would feel really bad for Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. earlier, earlier bits of season five, we saw Jack like talking to his past self and like he yeah. was past self like saying he was basically called a quits. You want him to commit seppuku and all that. And I was like, whoa, Jack must have been to some really harsh hell to go through that. And not to mention the second time we saw him, he was kind of like sinister looking because he had killed one of the daughters of Aku. And then when he got eaten by that beast, he was speaking with a more <laughs> calm Jack. At, at some point, he, he, he got a split personality because he was just going insane. <laughs> yeah. Make sure not to face. I go insane too. I mean, the last we saw Jack was, you know, he he was basically being uh, infected by Aku. So let's didn't... be real here. The best character of the show was Scary Moose. Oh, babe. <laughs> yeah. That was the best yeah. character of all season five. Let's be real here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if he was stupid or cheesy or whatever people think. He was the best. <laughs> hey, come on, babe. Come on. Come on. And he's only a number one fan, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> and remember when he was just ahead and he was on that, like, show, like, is this weird? Did that guy still like talking penis? Like, <laughs> I, I admire his enthusiasm and, and his, uh, and his non dying, uh, you know, determination. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still Aku's right hand man. Do you think I think there should be a spin-off for Samurai Jack though? Yeah. With a different character. I mean I mean maybe I'm perfectly content with how everything came together and I don't want yeah. anything else from it. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, f I feel like there's there's not really any material to go with. I mean, yeah, no. I think maybe that's a spinoff to see what has happened when Jack was going insane. You know, like a season in between that or a season that focuses on the Scotsman. But other than that, like, with Aku dead, you know, the material for <laughs> Samurai Jack pretty much died with Aku. Yeah, you know, yeah that, was, Aku was was the threat. Yeah, yeah, that's basically the thing. It could have been a two-parter, but the show ended great. Beyond it, that, it, there's it, really nothing. If someone thinks of something else to add, then okay, but we're satisfied. We don't need another season. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I completely agree. It doesn't need it. If we do get yeah. it, we'll be grateful, but it doesn't need it. Yeah, and I, I th but even with that, like, the story has to be really interesting, and like I'm saying, like I I feel like the the material's been been used up. I th I think it's uh, I think this last season was the tail end of it. There's not really much more you can go with it. So, I would say this is an opportunity to just let it end on the high note of season five, and you know, release the collector's and, edition and in Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, and, and not DVDs, Blu-ray. Yeah. As as great as a spinoff would be, I th I think Samurai Jack should be done now, and let's uh, yeah, we... give an, give another show a, a shot now. You know, mm -hmm. let's revive another one and see what happens. Symbiotic <laughs> Titan. <laughs> Symbiotic Titan for the win. I I agree. Uh, Born Titan season two. <laughs> <laughs> now. Megas XLR season three <laughs> in a, in sweet <laughs> HD and maybe a crossover with both. <laughs> maybe release that a vinyl. Freaking awesome though. <laughs> yeah, we need a vinyl of the theme song. But yeah, like I I I'm really interested in where Adult Swim's gonna go now because um they you know they have, they, they have mentioned that they're apparently work they're apparently working on stuff and specifically bringing back some revivals so i'm curious which shows they're referring to when when they say revivals you know um, i hope they go season three they go season three yeah. season two was ending was not good <laughs> yeah. the season itself was okay i but, I, I, I still uh, need to uh, I still need to grind through se season one. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> I've tried right every now, single I time, and every time I just lose interest. It's like, ah. Oh. 
I try so hard for Big O. I try to. I like I'm, it. I'm probably but... gonna do a rewatch, uh, which we'll get to that topic when we get to that. But you yeah. know, I, for what Adult Swim is working on, um, they kind of Gindia said like, "Yeah, I'm interested in working on more shows for Adult Swim." So maybe he's kind of <clears throat> talking with them, like once Hotel Transylvania Three wraps up, he'll yeah. be ready to pitch his next idea to Adult Swim. Yeah, yeah a new okay. idea or. You know, again, he was working on Symbionic Time before that got canceled. So, yeah, hopefully they can maybe work out a deal with Cartoon Network. I don't know, but maybe maybe uh, he'll just redo it. They have to go through like legal loopholes. Yeah, no, I, uh, they can... I, I get that, but I'm just saying the fact that Gendy, mm -hmm. you know, is interested in working on that. There's, I would say, there's potential there. You yeah, know, nothing's definite, but we can only hope. We can only hope. Yeah. You know what I hope for? The return of Thundercats. The, yeah. the the revi mm -hmm. the revival Thundercats wasn't too bad. I actually really liked it. I didn't I think it was okay. I was upset. I was kind of upset that it got canceled too, because I, I I thought it had a good cliffhanger too. I didn't expect uh, what's her name to betray <laughs> uh, Lionel. I, I thought that was a neat twist, and it was kind of disappointing because we don't know where it's going to go from there, uh, and we'll there. never know. No. I would say Voltron, but they already did that. Yeah, and that's Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, that's that's on Netflix. That's not yeah, Legendary Defender's pretty damn good. <laughs> I still need to well, sit down and watch it. So, anyway. Anyway, we should we get on. off far from Jack. <clears throat> well, it's I mean, it, it kind of relates with revivals and everything. Oh, you know? yeah. True. Yeah. Next so, topic. We'll speak up forming Titans. Yeah. That's uh, that's a good segue. Uh, let's talk about Attack on Titan season two so far. So season um, two simulcast just recently finished, and uh, I'm hearing a lot of interesting things about season two's finale, which I've not watched. So I'm interested. Same. Everybody and, does. Uh, so far, I've been really enjoying season two of Titan. And it was recently announced that season three is happening sooner than we thought, yes. to my understanding. Which season is three is coming out next year. Yeah. So we already know Nami's picking up next year. Yep. Besides One Punch Man. Yeah, but oh, yeah, that's besides One Punch Man. We're going to yeah. be getting Titan and One Punch Man next year. Huh. That would be interesting. Mm, Unless One Punch Man is, is working on a simul dub and getting it on TV, although I doubt that. I, I think I, I'm pretty confident that's that's going to come to Toonami. One Punch Man was a big hit. Oh yeah, One Punch Man. Let that go. I'm pretty sure Attack on Titan will continue to keep coming on, yes. be a regular on there. It's mm -hmm. it's doing very well at 12:30. At least I think so. Yeah, I I, I feel like it, it's in my opinion it's doing a little bit worse than season one, but it's still doing good for the time slot. Good enough. Yeah, but you're also comparing a show that's airing two slots down than when it was originally airing. Yeah, no, I I'm, I understand that. That you know, I and we're also shorter compared to six and a half hours. Yeah, yeah there's that too. I don't, I don't know. It's it's weird. The ratings are weird during the summer. They're they're really inconsistent from from what I've seen in the last uh, <laughs> couple of, from the last couple of years that uh since tsunami's yeah. been revived, like the the beginning summer. Summer days, like Toonami's ratings are just they suck, and then as the holidays come, they pick up, which is interesting. But I guess that's probably because everyone's home at school and all everyone's you know not exhausted from being at the beach all day and everything. Yeah. I guess my, my guess is more people are traveling during the summer season since it's nice, yeah, that's a valid point, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since they're always traveling, then there's not as much consistency, so. Usually yeah. you find more consistency during the end of the year when people yeah. are locked in for fall and winter. Yep. Everyone's at school, everyone's home, and everything. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. True. I mean the lowest yeah. ratings you're gonna see are like Christmas yeah. and New Year. <laughs> during the uh yeah, during the uh the reruns. <laughs> or whenever Marathons. One Piece does a marathon. Oh wait. <laughs> uh, don't bring it up. Yeah, yeah it'll hurt. I can't believe we got Tokyo Ghoul instead. Can we get rid of that sooner? 
It's ending in September, so there is your answer to that. Uh, <laughs> That's not yeah. soon enough. <laughs> Just replace it with Parasite again. No, I wouldn't. I'd be, do, I'd be down I, to watch, be watch Parasite at 1 a.m. I slept through last <laughs> week's Parasite and wake up during the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I just tried. Uh, to I fun. just could not. I mute it because it. Hunter is after it. But it's uh, back on topic about Titan. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna yeah. say from from what I hear, Attack on Titan mm-hmm. gets crazy. From from what I've heard from my friends, like they, I think they either watch sub or some of them read the manga, and apparently yeah. it really gets ridiculous. Not in a bad way. I'm like, hearing the next really arc after good. the Beast. I'm hearing the next arc after the Beast Titan arc is uh, boring, and this okay. part in the manga story is pretty uneventful. Although okay. I, I will say the anime is very interesting. I currently yeah. like the shift in tone. I, I like that it's consistent with its art style. It's still mm-hmm. very consistent with its voice cast. I've I've, got, I'm very yeah. impressed with its dub. Like the scripting is pretty decent this time mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. Well, are I they going to bring back that Beast Titan? Yeah, like, at, at first, I, I know I was saying at first that um, I was kind of like, uh, I was having difficulty following it, but I, I think I found my stride, and it, it I've come around on it. I I like it a lot more now. Um, I understand yeah. what's going on. It's interesting. Um, I, I feel like there's a lot more stakes going on. Um... And I'm just curious where it's heading at this point, because uh, you know, they... a lot of interesting they... reveals, you know, yeah. in the last couple just... episodes. Even though yeah. they just played the out... reveal to the Titans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can spoil it for you. Someone spoil me. Yeah, what's in the I, chest. I've known, <laughs> I don't. I don't read the manga, but I've known about the Titan spoilers for years. Yeah. Someone, yeah. someone yeah. spoil me what's yeah. in the attic or basement or whatever. It's oh, really I have not been spoiled sense. on that, but I know. The- I could reveal it. No. Yeah, please no. don't. Please shut no, up, no. Silver. <laughs> no. What's in the basement <laughs> is. I was gonna like fucking you. <laughs> <laughs> I was a second away no. from muting you. <laughs> yeah, please don't tell us that the One Piece is in the basement. <laughs> Shit, no wonder no one's found it. <laughs> what a twist! Dude, another freaking one piece in Attack on Titan in the same universe. What a twist! <laughs> no wonder that... no one's found the damn One Piece. It's in another freaking universe. <laughs> in so <the> timeline. <laughs> Gold Roger crossed Davy Jones's locker, went into the universe of Attack on Titan, and discovered One Piece in Aaron's basement. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> Here, uh, there you go, One Piece podcast. You got your topic. <laughs> Titans are aren't created from whatever they're created from. They're created from devil fruits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the I'm gonna laugh if, if what's in the ba- I'm gonna laugh if the One Piece is just a porn stash. <laughs> <laughs> and they mixed up with whatever is in the basement in Attack on Titan. <laughs> what they find in the basement is Luffy's straw hat for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh man, what the fuck? Anyway, um, but yeah, what do you what do you guys think? Where do you think uh, Attack on Titan is heading with uh, the reveals that have been revealed so far? Everyone's gonna die. Like... <laughs> I don't read. I imagine that there's gonna be infighting. Well, because, yeah. Like really bad infighting because suddenly revealing that you, the two best pals are a the armor titan and b the colossal titan. And maybe um, Aaron's father could be the beast titan. Yeah. Um, so, I, I actually <clears throat> thought of that, but I think I think it was Berserk who brought up a good point. I forgot what she mentioned, but um, she brought up a very good point where I, I don't <laughs> think, because of that point that she made, I don't think she, uh, he's the um, 
I don't think that Titan is Aaron's father. Um, yeah, it was, just a, it was an educated guess. Yeah, no, I, I, I was thinking the same thing, man. Or, I'm not sure. Home, didn't he, like, was not familiar with the ODM gear? That kind of raises a bit of suspicion. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yes, that's a good point. Yeah, I... That's the thing, like, I, I, that's one of the things I love about Attack on Titan is the mystery surrounding it. That's one of the things that keeps me attached to it, because I'm, I'm really curious, like, how the Titans are, are created and basically why, like, some people have, like, the ability to turn into a Titan. Um, um I think I... season one already showed how. Basically, you take a drug and boom, you're a Titan. Oh really? Is that it? Oh, can I can I get that? Because I need that in my daily life. There's a scene where Aaron gets a flashback of his dad injecting him with something. Oh, okay. And, and it makes a female yeah. type extra. And, and then at the same uh, time he, he gets the key. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like so there's I'm guessing there, whatever's in that. I, I have a feeling that there's there's I think there's obviously some kind of like DNA manipulation or you know something like that yeah. that allows you to transform into a Titan. Um, I'm just curious <laughs> why it's happening though and what it means to the the overarching <laughs> story, you know? Yeah. Also, um, one last thing I wanted to point out: since when do the Titans move at nighttime? I thought they only move the day. I, I know the Beast Titan had something to do with that, but. Like still, uh, it might be a different type of titan. Yes, you, know, uh, you know, like the the ones that we've become accustomed to. They can they can go any time, but at night, you know, these only come out at night. I guess I don't know. That's, There's that's also the fact that the show has proven that the titan that there's the possibility that the titans aren't just monsters; they could be real humans. Yeah. So, yeah. if, so if, if Eric Trump can become a Titan at night, we haven't seen it, but let's be real, huge possibility. Then yeah. we can assume that the Titans just prefer to do their tactics during the day. I've I've had a uh, a theory. Uh, I don't I don't know what it means, but like I, I've had a theory that I think Mikasa may have been uh, also. I don't know if she she'll be able to turn into a Titan per se. But I feel like she has... That would be freaking awesome! <laughs> but I, I feel like she Thank has, you. like, some some Titan DNA in her. She, she, as a person, she seems more... Even though she's calm and quiet, she's more, she seems more animalistic, even as a human. So I feel like there, she may have been manipulated a little bit. I don't know. Maybe. Aaron's father, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, he totally movie. didn't drug those kids. Totally didn't do it. The guys who read the Attack on Titan manga are gonna laugh at us. They probably no. Yeah. They, I I think they already laugh at us because they're like, <laughs> I already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> what idiots! Oh, what they, idiots! Oh, they think what dreams! <laughs> oh, they think my class is gonna be a Titan. <laughs> they just found out that there's Titans in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that was so like two years ago. <laughs> there was the program, weebs. <laughs> but no, no, in, in all seriousness, though, um, no, much, much love to the Attack on Titan manga fans. We're only kidding. But, um, I know, no, yeah. Just, just don't I, spoil anyone. If yeah. anyone who listens to this podcast reads the Attack on Titan manga, either legally or illegally don't spoil anything yeah please please, please don't please don't reveal anything we, we i will erase that any that comments that contain spoilers yeah, yeah basically my friend don't be a jerk and don't spoil spoil anything with that i would say speaking of surprises lupin the third part four is finally on tsunami Yay. And, uh, got its premiere awesome. and everything what, what, I really think, love it. what did we think of the premiere episode? Love it. It's Lupin. It is. I'm, I'm holding back my giddiness because I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need I, to watch the, the other series. I'm a little disappointed that it's at 2 a.m. Because for such a fun yes. show, 
it yes, deserves I agree. a better time slot. I, I mean, come on. I mean, come yeah. on. Even I know it's a niche property, but come on. Like two years ago, they gave Michiko and Hachin, a show that's been out for a while that's under the radar, a 1 a.m. slot. Come yeah, on, come I, on now. That's just I, I that's just I, doing Lupin dirty. Yeah, I think I, 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 think I can think of one show that we can take down a notch. Maybe a <laughs> okay, go on. Yes. <laughs> I strongly but unfortunately, I, I called it from the moment Tokyo Ghoul came on that they were never going to move that show, which infuriates me. Yeah, I I mean, to be fair, to, I mean, I'm not... I mean, to be everyone, fair, I understand of, yeah. why. I'm sure I feel yeah. like it's, it's not top of the anime. Though, it right? kind of just... It's doing fine. The thing is, it's doing the fine. The thing is, it's rate. doing fine, but it's not bringing in a new audience, which is yes. what Toonami wanted or what Adult Swim wanted after One yes. Piece was not bringing in required viewers or bringing in a new crowd. Right. So, Tokyo Ghoul isn't doing that, but I think the eyebrows would be raised a bit if they moved it to 2 a.m. I agree. Lupin, I think, should go to 1 p.m. I think basically Tokyo Ghoul and Lupin should switch. Um, and I, I don't mean to hate on Tokyo Ghoul, but, um, I, and no I, I would, I would think like maybe giving it some time and if Lupin's ratings improve and actually do better than Tokyo Ghoul, I could see that happening maybe, but right now, no. I, I don't know. No. But, um, Eric, there's only three months left of Tokyo Ghoul after season one ends. It's pointless. Enough. Yes. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. If, if Tokyo Ghoul is still like in its early run, like still season one, yeah, I, sure. I know. I know. But honestly, this left, is really... might as well duke it out at like one. But the, honestly, it's just yeah. really sad. I think Tokyo Ghoul is the first Toonami show in a long time where I genuinely just can't get into it. I can't. Oh, it's definitely compared to G or to GXP. I can get into Dimension W to a certain extent, mm -hmm. and that's sad. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 no, I, I hear you. Man. I totally get, get it. it. When, whenever Toka is the focus, then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm listening. When, whenever we go back to the kid, I'm like, oh, him again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. Wait a minute, I, 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 I hear you. Um, I, I have genuinely tried, but I can't get into it. For for Lupin, like I don't I don't know if my perspective is coming from a biasm or anything <laughs> like that. But the first episode, I fucking loved it. Like it was just, it was kind of a breath of fresh air for some reason. I I don't know why, but it lived up to like I I was super hyped for the show. I uh, I've been preaching. I've been praying for the show to come on. For months now, and now that we got, it, and I, I'd never seen it before, so I'm experiencing it for the first time. I mean, I've seen Lupin in the past, but for part four, this is the first time I've seen it, and I, I, I got like a breath of fresh air. Like it, this this Lupin just feels like a a breath of fresh air. It was it was just so unique and different compared to like the other shows on Toonami, where it's like. It's kind of like a counterbalance, like like we were saying. It's it's a lot more lighthearted. It kind of falls into like the Tenchi, the Tenchi type of style anime, and it was kind of nice to have that finally again. Really, even even uh, in considering losing One Piece as well to an extent. Um, again, I don't know if it's like a biasm from my perspective, but I freaking love Lupin, and I wish it, it came mm -hmm. on earlier in in the lineup. I, I mean, it's it's such a small title compared to like other big profile shows and i've wanted to get as much attention as possible because lupon's a fun series yeah but no the heavy yeah. hitters are out first you know jack <clears throat> titan super uh, ghoul which is, which hunter is fine, but but that's what i'm saying like do you consider tokyo ghoul as a hard hitter i, I mean it's don't. one of i mean it's one of funimation's top sellers so obviously somebody likes it <laughs> Because it's I mean, Hot Topic the anime. Yeah. You've said it yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not a popular show, though. I understand why it's popular. Yeah, it same. sells merchandise. I think that's the main reason why it's... People one like of edginess and tasteless anime. Show. 
yeah. it's not that the yeah. show sells well it's that the merchandise sells really well well the like, show actually yeah. is, is a top seller except for season two except uh, season two from my understanding i think sold poorly in japan but sold well over here but again like i i, I agree with you sam i i just wish uh lupon for a premiere show, I don't think 2 a.m. is the proper time slot for it. It's, it's I mean, this is day. this has been a while since 2 a.m. has been like a premiere slot. Like yeah. we we're talking back in 2014, like when Beware the Batman was airing at 2:30. Like those were mm -hmm. premiere slots. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> I mean, Long to be fair though, too. Good. To be fair though, too, like those were aired on Cartoon Network as well, and I understand. Like, <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, Beware of the Batman was a special case since it didn't finish on Cartoon Network technically um, but yeah I, I don't know like I, I I just wish Lupin would move up in the, uh, the time slot because I, I feel like it's it's a better show compared to um, Tokyo Ghoul at the very least um, yeah like I don't know if I'm being I'm honest, I'm in true Lupin, pa in true Lupin fashion, he's gonna steal Tokyo Ghoul's slot. <laughs> I hope steals I everything hope. else. <laughs> I, I wish. I I would hope so. I I doubt it, but you know. Yeah. Ne I it's possible. Never bet against Lupin, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I looked at first weeks. You know, I I don't try to take readings for face value because we don't get the yeah. full picture. But uh, the moment that you realize that Ship It In and Ghost in the Shell do better and they air later than Lupin is really sad. sad. Yeah. Especially when Ghost in the Shell is a rerun for the 30th time, I uh, guess. HD. It's an HD. It's an HD. So it's the first time it's airing in HD, but still. Yeah, but that's still the 30th time. rerun of a 10 year old show. I, I, I think it, I would think maybe giving it. Giving it some time though too. Um, well, we're breaking for a marathon next week for Attack on Titan. That, so and uh, that, that I would say is no momentum. Yeah, that, that is another thing that, that I that is another thing that I do have to be critical of. Every time it seems like every every time when we get a new show, they always follow up the following week with a fucking marathon. It's like, <laughs> how is the show supposed yeah. to, you know, get some momentum going toward it? If I mean, we watch one episode and then we have to wait two weeks. I don't. For mind. It. I, mean, I think we've gone over this. I don't mind marathons. I understand why they do them because they take yeah. the nights off. Because ultimately, here's the thing: they want Titan to be on longer. They don't care that the simulcast is over. They didn't care about being on topic with the simulcast. Yeah. They knew that they got it as fast as they could, and they're getting it. They're keeping it for as long as they can right it's and, only 12 yeah. episodes so you gotta drag it out as much as frick yeah as yeah possible. no and and don't get me wrong i'm not denying that the, pro the problem was the problem that i have with it though is that it just seems like the last few premieres that we've had have been followed up with a marathon the following oh, yeah. week and yeah, yeah. That that's kills the momentum a it, it, that it, happened it's a killer show. in the ratings and that did not help out well for jojo's case yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like JoJo was doing really well, and then the marathon hit, and then. Well, I wouldn't say it was doing really well. Like it was holding DBZ okay ish, and then was, that marathon happened. I, and it was the thing like, is, it's similar similar to the to the One Piece filler stuff where the ratings just dropped. Oh god, the, just dropped the five week, the five weeks of filler just basically yeah. killed any momentum One Piece had at one a.m. or yeah, one thirty or it's, whatever it's, time slot it's it was at. it's basically the 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 same the same uh practice really and and i think if Amer i think if you got a premiere show i think you got to give it like a couple episodes i they are think, airing if it you're, for two if you're gonna, weeks. i know but if, if i mean it's better, than, premiere, it's better than them just airing it for a week taking it off and then putting it back on that would be terrible like it i think i, would, I, would I think, think at max yeah, i ahead, think Sam. at max three weeks Three weeks for a show that's enough time for getting people interested but two weeks if there's two weeks in your marathon you may lose interest either that or push the premiere the week after the marathon hits because then you could just go right through i mean sometimes sometimes these things don't line up like we would hope so because 
Unicorn ended yeah. two weeks before June ended, mm -hmm. so they needed something to premiere. <laughs> right. To and to be fair, I I understand that, but I I feel like I mean that I guess they could have aired like a <laughs> two episode OVA, but those those things probably cost a lot. Yeah. No, dude. But the thing is, like again, I feel like they should. But maybe that's something that if if we get Jason back on, I think that'll be an interesting question to ask him. Like, what's what's the logic behind like the scheduling? Because like, if I was in Jason's shoes, I would have waited like the week after the marathon happens, because then the marathon would I mean, you know mean? interrupts you know the premiere the premiere show that you're premiering. I mean, once again, know? once again, we can like say that we would know best, but it's like what we know. Like we're a bunch of people. Yeah, who are fans. We're, yeah, we're only going by perspectively. Yeah, we're only going by face value. We're we're definitely not experts, and and that's why I'm saying like that should be a question that should be uh, you know, asked to Jason because he would know. And I'm curious, like how does um like what conflicts with uh scheduling something like that and why yeah. like the, I mean, were they had did they have to put Lupin the premiere last week and have the marathon the, the following week or I mean what would you rather it? have them double up on shows for two weeks that costs extra money I mean there is there's nothing they could literally do it was either well, air a new show or rerun unicorn again I I would rather if you could. If I was gonna they have could have aired show. random space dandy episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess but they have but no so continuity in between each other. So, I mean, depending technically, they actually you know, you know, de depending on the process of how they schedule, you know, basically putting in a show at at a noon time slot. Whatever that process is, if it was up to me, though, I would have waited till after the marathon to premiere it. So. The premiere show isn't getting interrupted by a marathon a week after the the, the show premiered because honestly that's some people supposed to get interested in it if they watch the first episode and then they have to wait two weeks for the next episode it's, it's i mean like the once again, they're airing two they're airing two episodes they're fine they've done this before with uh, mm. a bunch of other shows michiko and hachin aired yeah. for two weeks and then was removed for a DBZ marathon, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, DBZ marathon. The DBZ yeah, marathon. And then, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you would have to like maybe ask someone from programming, like I don't know, Kim Maining. I, I don't know. Like this is literally about timing and acquiring yeah. shows, and then a bunch of other legal bullshit that you have to go through and talk about. Right, right. That, I'm assuming there's something that you know. Basically, they they had to premiere it last week. I'm I'm assuming, I'm assuming like the well, these decisions I mean, they are made way ahead of time, and there's a lot that plays into it. I mean, um, think about what happened with Adult Swim Action. They always replayed the show even after it ended, so yeah. they would keep the show on, and if it did well, it kept on chugging along, keep uh, rerunning and rerunning and rerunning. Tsunami doesn't operate like that. They constantly want new shows cycling in so they aren't reusing the same shows again. Yeah, they they want to keep the, the they want to keep Tsunami fresh at the very least. Yeah. yeah. I mean, after a while, Adult Swim Action kind of just got stale. They yeah. kind of relied on their old hitters way too much. Mhm. Mm and, and I think and I think Tsunami shows. Yeah. And I, I think Jason and and the Tsunami crew recognize that, and I, I I'm I think that has been mentioned to them too. So I'm assuming they're aware of that. Definitely. And I I mean at least I mean for the most part I think they've been airing at least more premieres than Adult Swim Action has in its life and getting oh, yeah. the, the ratings. Without question, yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, you know, once again, we can speculate all this and say, oh, we know this, but it's like. What do we know? Like, we're just fans. Absolutely. We're talking about this. We're, yeah, we're to be just to clarify. We're no, <clears throat> we're definitely not experts in this. We're just going by what we generally know. That's that's out there, and which is usually very little to what yes. the actual <laughs> TV station knows. So yeah, yeah we're we're just going by speculation and things that we've read here and there, but and basically putting you know apples to oranges. But yeah, we we don't know. We're, we're just speculating, just to yeah. be, yeah, yeah, with I our mean, knowledge of the 
of the material, it's, you know, of the it's process. It's incredibly disappointing and disheartening that Lupin was shafted to 2 a.m. when it's a premiere. But what what will you do? Honestly, even I'll I'll be critical of it till the day I die. But I'm just happy it's on the block. That yeah. you know, better than nothing. It's um, at least nice to have something lighthearted and fun airing. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, what did you guys think of the 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 first episode? What were your impressions of it? Oh, loved it. Pretty fun. Seems really interesting. Like I said, it's loop on the third. <laughs> yeah. I have fun. It's like literally nothing has changed over the course of part <laughs> two and four. Besides the beautiful <laughs> animation. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like it was made in the 70s. The animation's so beautiful. I, I love it. It looks so Show's nice. fun. It's definitely a change of pace in between the intense Samurai Jack, mm-hmm. the nonsensical retreading of Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball yeah. Z movies <laughs> from Super, revisiting Kai, mm-hmm. and Titans. Boring ghoul for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man Flesh. Attack on Titan. Good show, but again, intense. Hunter Hunter, it can be fun, but lately it's been getting really serious. So basically, Loop Loop on the Thirty is yeah, it's really the only uh, comedical, the only show, show that's lighthearted in the entire block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, a little, it's a little Hunter. disheartening. It changes the pace a bit. Yeah, which I honestly, agree. I think we really needed it for a while. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. It, it just felt and we to don't me, talk it, it about just... ship it in and ghost in the shell because nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it it Lupin just feels really unique and special. I I don't know why I'm overhyping it so much, but I just really enjoyed the first episode. I thought uh, the new characters, uh, the the what's what's her name, uh, who's a criminal for fun, because <laughs> bored. I thought she was a really interesting character, kind of like a foil to Lupin a little bit. Um, I, I liked how they introduced, so bring him, reintroducing the classic characters, um, and just the idea of Lupin getting married. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know much about Lupin, but even I know that he, <laughs> no, like him he getting loves, married, there's something up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but it, What's he stealing? If it's, if it's yeah, not her heart. It's the treasure. It has to be right. big, right? But still, yeah. like, it, it was it was a really it was a really fun experience, I and mean, it, it was it was nice it was nice to have. And I'm looking forward to it for the next God knows how many weeks. I'm glad it's around. <laughs> Twenty six weeks. This will last until early January. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. So with that, that I is- guess moving on from yeah, we're moving on from anime. Anime. We'll talk about E3. Oh my god, we're not talking about anime. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not talk about anime. <laughs> what well, did you don't say? There's a DC game world. coming out from Arc Systems next year. So there's your anime talk. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> well, um, E3. yeah, so E3, um, what do we think? Disappointing. This I agree. Fucking disappointing. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in all of these companies this year. It was kind of Ex- meh. Except for Devolver Digital. They won E3 this year. <laughs> I didn't even watch them. <laughs> I, I heard they were just basically trolling. Yeah. It, the best way I can describe it is that it starts off as a parody of an E3 press conference, and then it just goes straight up David Lynch. I totally recommend oh it. Oh, I need to check it out. That sounds fucking hilarious. Yes, Sam. You have. Everyone has to watch it. Like it's a must requirement. It, it was so. I dope. Seen it. But, uh, it made my fucking night. You know, <laughs> I didn't check out all of the press conferences. I checked out a small, teeny bit of EA left. <laughs> checked out a tiny bit of Bethesda left. Uh, <laughs> I watched a bit of Sony's press conference and a little bit of Ubisoft's. Yeah have me that much. Uh, the main ones that I watched were Microsoft and Nintendo and 
Because you're so disappointing. <laughs> Nintendo yeah, had some. Nintendo. Nintendo had three games that made me excited, and that's about it. I, I, I really have to say they brought games yeah. at the very least. Yeah, like that, all these yeah. other companies, at least they have exclusives for their systems. Like Sony, oh, yeah, yeah showed off a bunch of already known exclusives. Yeah, and Microsoft. We have console launch exclusives and Windows 10 exclusives. And, an, oh, and another freaking Xbox One. X. That's nobody's going to pick up because that thing is too expensive and not worth the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've seen, I saw all the press conferences. I, For me, basically, this year was basically a rehash of what was said before. It was basically a re clarification that of previous e3s basically to me and that that's what was really disappointing because i was expecting some some surprises hope i was hoping for some surprises and i again i, I have to say done. i, I got like some surprises from report. like here, here's what? the thing though I, I think nintendo brought surprises this year like yes no, i was not I, expecting I, a metroid 2. yes no um I would even I I say that Nintendo and from what I hear from a lot of people Nintendo basically uh, it's between Nintendo and Ubisoft who won E3 this year. Um, I mean, there's no definitive winner of E3. Gamers no. are the winner there, but you know, yes, it's like but you know, the whole like press thing, conference, yeah. like the most presentable press conference was probably Sony's, is what I'm hearing. Sony's had a very great press conference, even though a lot of it was retreading. Yeah. Yeah, and the, but you know, uh, Nintendo the brought the, yeah. the thing that excites me the most about E3 is the games. Yes. You know, nice hardware is all is nice and all, but you know, without any games, what's the point of it? And Nintendo okay, brought games, true. and that's awesome. Yep. And and that, uh, but you know, Ubisoft's conference, yeah. from what I heard, was also really well done. Yes, it, it had a lot of heart to heart with developers. Yep. It, it was, from what I hear, yeah. it was really well done. They showed, teased a lot of games. They showed off that Rabbids RPG game, which mm -hmm. doesn't look half bad, but I actually yeah. that looks pretty fun. And they brought me a moto out. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I didn't yeah. see that first conference. But but yeah, yeah. like U Ubisoft and Nintendo. Uh, and Sony win for like a pre presentation for me. Um, I was, I was actually kind of rooting for Microsoft, if I'm being completely honest, because I was like, yeah. maybe Microsoft will turn this around. They shat on all over themselves. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll push back a little bit on that, but I do, I do lean toward agreeing with you. My problem with Microsoft is that I, I respect that they brought a lot of <laughs> indies and everything, and I respect yeah. that. But my problem was that, um, and even post E3, Microsoft's been talking about it. Apparently, they have games in the uh, in the basement that are coming that they didn't even mention about. Um, <laughs> are I, they exclusive I, to the Xbox One X, or are they exclusive to Xbox and PC? I presume, <laughs> Xbox I, One I, S. I presume, I presume that's what they're saying. I, I presume that that's what they meant, but that. Is what, if that's my biggest criticism of Microsoft's E3 press conference is that they were talking about how this was the greatest them. system ever. I know, I know. That, that's what I'm getting to. They didn't show anything that really showcased why you should buy the Xbox One X. There's no <laughs> reason to. <laughs> uh, there's literally no hardware. There, there's like no game Microsoft, that really please, showcased please the full potential of it. The Xbox One X. And you, you already did that. I'm like, really? You guys yeah. could have kept Scorpio. It's like an Xbox One X model. Yeah, okay, so I, I agree. If, you, if you're a parent and you know nothing about gaming, how the hell are you supposed to market this thing? I, I, it's a powerful yeah. device that can run 4K. Exactly. Uh, okay. But the One S is $250 is 250 Cheaper. compared to yeah, 500. The, the Xbox the Xbox Slim is a, can apparently do 4K as well. So it's like why it's not it's true true 4K? There. Well, it it can actually upgrade some game. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. native 4K, but still even and from what I've heard even the Xbox One X isn't technically full 4K. Even the, it's like a slightly higher oh, native yeah. 4K. It's yeah. 
Why? I'm also hearing that games will be running at like a 30 frame per second. I'm like, really? Yeah. If I'm paying $500 for that, no. I, I'd rather just build myself a gaming PC at that point. Yeah, exactly. And from, from when Microsoft's I'm... reaching a point where every press conference they're going to re reveal a new console and it's going to be something really stupid. You know, like the Bit Wars back, back <laughs> in between Sega and Nintendo? It's going to be something like, now the Xbox one double X. <laughs> Xbox one triple X, buy one at your local Taco Bell. <laughs> we'll be able to do five more polygons. Buy, a, buy an Xbox, you get a free Xbox. taco. <laughs> buy an Xbox, you get a free taco. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but We're no, eventually like, going to reach that point, and that's yeah. not a good sign. You can't just keep releasing another update of the same oh, console the, the back to that, back to back upgrading it because that will just confuse disagree with that all, all the all the parents who okay so my son wants an xbox one why are there five different models of the same the, thing uh, that's my thing is like i think sony did the right thing in calling it the ps4 pro because it distinguishes itself from the ps4 yes. exactly yeah. but, if you but, just keep yeah. changing, changing the last I, letter Here's the That's thing. just going to confuse people. Yeah. Here's my thing is like, I think they should have called it the Elite. I, I heard that name thrown around a lot before E3. I'm like, that's a cool, cool name. That's actually a name that distinguishes the brand from yep. the other models out there. Xbox and Elite, kind of Xbox feels... Scorpio. Yeah, no, definitely. It works. But the, problem, but the problem with it, though, even with the name and everything, I agree with you with the marketing is going to be a problem because it sounds so similar to the normal <laughs> Xbox One. But it's also the fact that the Xbox One, they're still trying to support it. And the problem, the, th the thing that made the Pro uh, good was that it basically, you know, all the game developers make the games, you know, upscale to the Pro, but they can downscale it too to the base PS4 as well. And it supports yeah. both consoles. The yeah. Xbox One and the Xbox One X, from what I hear, two they're two different architectures levels. yeah two different architectures two different spectrums on the techno scale and it's going to be really hard for developers to make games on the xbox one x and then downscale that to play well on the xbox I mean, one x here's the thing if it's close to pc architecture that's really cool because i think that'll be easy for pc ports but if you're yeah. buying an Xbox One X, odds are you should just build a gaming PC instead. And and that's an yeah, that's another thing too. Like, like for five hundred dollars, really you can build yourself they, a better console that can run games yeah. at like a hundred FPS. They they have really dug themselves in a hole. And yeah, again, the thing that, the thing that should have saved <laughs> Xbox was the games. And again, why why dedicate your press conference to basically saying the tagline of uh, have, to the point where you're having uh, the, the audience wearing shirts saying, we have just witnessed the most powerful system ever created. And yet you don't have the game showcasing what the most powerful yeah. system is capable of. It, yeah. Why? I think. Why focus your entire I mean, like, always, conference on indies? <laughs> we've learned from history past and it's like these console manufacturers never learned. It's that the most powerful console of its generation never wins. Yeah, you need the games that showcase how powerful the system is. That's why that's why Sony is just so good at it because like God of War, Spider-Man, <coughs> even though those games aren't exclusive, they're showcasing what the what that uh they they're basically showcasing what it looks like on the Pro. Like it looks good well, on I think it's soft. Indies, 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 indies. I mean, I love me some indie games, games, but I'm like, where's your first party? Where's your third exactly. party? Exactly. Is that you need something to show? Okay, the box I mean, looks pretty. The specs are impressive. I mean, but shows what the thing is like. Actions. You know, Nintendo doesn't. I mean, Nintendo's sort of in the same spot. They don't necessarily have third parties currently. Mm -hmm. But you know, if. If the switch is a success, you know you, you, we could see more. It, yeah, and it's yeah, already it's selling well. well. When, when, when apparently the big ball-breaking game you have is Anthem from EA, which is coming to all the consoles. Yeah, yeah, the, it looked well, impressive. All, the, all but, the consoles that can run it. Yeah, but but that's what I'm saying. It you'll be able to get on the pro, on the PlayStation Pro, PlayStation Four. So 
why are you showcase? Well, I'm, I understand why showcasing it and everything, but why are you showcasing it on the Xbox stage, showing this is you know this is the Xbox One X enhanced anthem, whatever? And it's like, sure, that cool. looks great, but it's going to look hardly any different on the Pro. Good job. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like Microsoft really needs to stop putting it on PC. PC games, that's fine. It's fine you're getting like these Windows <laughs> ports of games, but it's like you're undermining the sale of the Xbox. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, they needed the first party games. What are the games that I have to get the Xbox One X for? Where I mean, is. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not going to say that it has to be. Yeah, like. I'm, where is, where is for an, well, it's basically I'm going to go with, like, where are the Halos? Where are the Gears of War? And now, when I say that, I don't mean they have to be a Halo or a Gears of War, but where's that I mean, first party game, the ball breaking game where I'm like, I have to buy this system in order to get this unique. I think people just got really system. sick of those games. Well, again, I'm not I saying mean, that it has to be a Halo or a Gears. Me out on this. But yeah, it's like um, those games are system sellers, but I don't think they're as big as they once were. Because yeah. Gears was like a huge name on the 360, and when we got to right. the Xbox One, it was like, okay, okay, whatever. And it seemed like a Halo. They kept on pumping out Halo game on the Xbox, mm -hmm. Xbox 360, and with the Master Chief Collection on the Xbox One. And like, uh, you know, I'm getting really sick of Halo. And when we got to new games and new franchises like ReCore, apparently that was rushed out the yeah. door so they could meet a deadline. So yeah, the game sadly. turned out not as great as it want, as yeah. they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. that, and then that's we, what I heard too. And then we had canceled exclusives like Scalebound. That game would have looked amazing. But yep. once again, Microsoft had to butt heads with Platinum and... Nothing came of that game, and it's just sad and disappointing. And it, it was also the direction that they're going too. They basically made a completely one a complete 180 from their direction. Like, uh, and you know, some of the games that they had, the the Halo TV show that they were trying to produce with Steven Spielberg got canceled as well. Um, I thought that was still in production. I thought that was still I, being I heard worked it, on. I heard, it, I heard it got canceled. From what well, I heard. we all know what happened to that whole TV deal then. Yeah. And that's the thing is like when the Xbox One launched, they really were pushing for television, which yep. I guess would have been fine back in 2006 when streaming wasn't a big deal. Yeah. But yeah. for a 2013 console when streaming was like the biggest thing, it's like. I just put sound out, but I don't see what's the point. It's just like a replacement for a cable box. Yeah, it was basically yeah. a DVR. It was basically a DVR, the original Xbox One, with that <laughs> could play games. But I, I just want to reiterate though, when I say the Xbox One X needed games like a Halo or a Gears, I'm not saying specifically it needs a Halo or a Gears, but basically the ball breaking first party games that really showcase when the full of uh, the full architecture is being being utilized to build the game from the ground up is what I'm saying. They basically need new first party I IPs uh, that are made specifically for the Xbox One X. I think so, that's something that Sony's pretty much done really brilliantly. Yes, is that they've kind exactly. of showcased how, how big the PlayStation ecosystem has come because mm -hmm. even though we've gotten sequels of like big game franchises, Infamous, Uncharted, we're getting A Last of Us 2, yep. they've seen all week to the overall look and feel of the game it's kind of like oh yeah this is another halo and here's another gears it's just like clockwork it makes money but with those games it's like the art style doesn't necessarily change that much like i don't play a lot of gears games but i do see like gameplay footage online i'm like that looks like the same thing as like the last game that i played on the 360 mm -hmm. <laughs> which is not a good thing because if you really want to push the graphics of your system you need to do something brand new and fresh right i i completely agree and take and god of war for an sony, example i think you know? sony for a reason is that's why they're thriving so much is that they well for, they're thriving for multiple reasons one is because the playstation 4 is the easiest console to develop for mm -hmm. and they've just killed it they've, they've basically been selling these things like clockwork and well, they they learned that from the play, from the failure with the PlayStation Three. 
Yeah, and they learned that developers do want to work on easy to develop systems. The PlayStation 3 was a mess architecture wise. Yes. It took years for developers to understand that. Yep. But after the PlayStation 3 and life's ended, the PS4 is literally like the developer's best friend. It, it is easy to develop for. It's easy to work with Sony on these games and it's easy to port from PC to this console. So yep. it's literally the best of all worlds. Whereas the Xbox One, from what I understand, it's harder to understand architecture compared to 360, mm -hmm. which I think is what they were trying to alleviate with the One X. Still a stupid sounding name, but <laughs> I think that's the thing that they wanted to do is like make it a lot easier for developers to get in. But the problem is, I think developers don't care at this point. Sony has the large share of the market. Yeah, and and I think and I think part of the reason why for that as well to to piggyback on that are are the games that they developed and and even taking some risks like um I'm one of my most anticipated games is God of War, which I never I never been a personally I've never been a big fan of the God of War series. I've tried them from here and there. I've tried some of the previous ones and I wasn't a fan of it. But this got mm. the new one was kind of like a, a complete overhaul of, of the the game mechanically to me like it, i get like a witcher uh you know role-playing type of open world vibe from this from this god of war game and you know the the camera view isn't like far away in a wide shot it's it's a you know third person behind your back and everything uh and the gameplay looks great and it looks like it has a really interesting story um and again, that's a, that's a game that's being developed from the ground up with the PlayStation 4 tech in mind. Those are the type of games that Microsoft needs. They need they need what Sony has of like the Uncharted Last of Us, God of War, or Infamous, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's the thing. They Sony has the perfect the perfect blend of like first party development, third party development, and you know in indie development and also the PlayStation Now to an extent, you know, with their yeah. backwards compatibility, which is a ripoff, by the way, don't support that. But it's there. I'm going to acknowledge that it's there. And, it, you know, yeah. it, just, it just adds to the endless library that Sony has at their disposal yeah. as compared to Microsoft that That's have completely so shot thing themselves is, in the like, purse. <laughs> the sad thing is, is that I, I really, I, I may not be a big Microsoft fan, I, I, I owned a 360 at one point, and I was like, this console isn't for me, but, you know, it has some cool games, but, I mean, like, I, I really wanted them to turn it around, because competition is nice, mm -hmm. and it kind of says a lot when I really think, I do think the Switch might outsell the Xbox One in total sales in a few years. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that, but I, I could see it happening, <clears throat> I could definitely see it as, as a realistic possibility. But yeah, well, going, yeah. <laughs> if if Nintendo keeps going at the pace that they're going, marketing yeah. it and kind of bringing games out for it, was, that's like a whole other discussion, though. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Thank God, thank God for the Switch. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, but thank God for the Switch. From the C three were the Mario Odyssey game, Monster Hunter World on the PS four. That looks phenomenal, by the way. Yeah. And and yeah, like for the longest time, a couple of my friends, like Jammer on YouTube, he kind of speculated that they would be coming back to the PS4. I, and I kind of yeah. got him to I see, like, yeah, I took my hat to, dude. You were right. For the anime, for, for the anime fans out there, uh, how about Shadow of the Colossus getting completely remade on the PlayStation 4? Like, there's things like that where it's like, eh. yeah, I know it's a myth, but again, like, that's something that. I think you were mentioned uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I was gonna mention oh, that yeah. next. That was the third. One. Yeah. yeah, I that mean that game looks so fun. Looks yeah. like Blaze Blue beats Dragon mm -hmm. Ball Z skins. Yep. <laughs> but again, the like but the, the trailer. But it, it goes to, it goes back to the point where like Sony is is just so so diverse with with its library. Like there, it just seems like they have like an endless supply of endless supply of games at their disposal that they they, they could just like rifle out whenever they want. I mean, another another uh, exclusive that's coming out in a couple weeks. Uh, I think like next week, Crash Bandicoot 
being remade and remastered on the PlayStation 4. I mean, that's that's freaking dope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, that just makes sense. I mean, the Crash Bandicoot started on the PlayStation 1, so, you know, it makes sense that they would get Crash. Yeah, but it's still, like, as an exclusive, although, I don't know. But again, it, it's just one of those, you know, it's just one of those perks of, like, owning a PS4. And Microsoft, there's not really yeah. any perk for you owning a PS, uh, I mean, uh, an Xbox One X, let's just say, you know? The games are going mean, to look better no, on it, there's but... There's no perk of me buying an Xbox One. It's like, ooh, backwards compatibility. It's like, okay, but I can pick up a 360 and an Xbox One for $500 less and yeah. get awesome games for... Yeah, you can pretty much get both systems for pretty much the same amount that the Xbox One X is being... Uh, for its ask, asking price, you know. Well, I could probably yeah. get those cheaper with games and all that. Like, it, yeah, but still, the, you know, the it's just like, you can get I that. Mean, like, yeah, I, I will say like Microsoft did bring games, and yeah, I, I really did think they showed off Forza way too much. Like they should have just that should have been like a three minute thing and kind of moved yeah. on from that. Instead, they kind of took up like I think it was like 10, 15 minutes about cars. It's like. Oh, yeah, I, cool. I, I was I was tweeting about it. Fuck cars at E3. I get why they're there. They're supposed to be. They, the press, EA, hey, hey, and Microsoft uh, show show those off. If you can't afford this car, the graphics. You can't afford an Xbox One X. <laughs> yeah, but like, I I get why they're there. It's it's to showcase the graphics. I get it. I do. But, but why was there a fucking car on the stage? <laughs> that makes no yeah. sense. Because it's car been done, porn. It's been done in the past. It's been done in the past. It's them trying to be hip and cool. I yes, hate it. It's I'm not a car, car guy. No. <laughs> because honestly, cars honestly <laughs> watching those cars, it, <laughs> it doesn't make it to me. It doesn't look cool. It just makes me think. Wow, look at that beautiful car that I will never be able to own. Again, <laughs> that's it, my thought too. Yeah, no, it, it's my thought too. I mean, I it was cool, but what's the point? Because the amount of I'll never be able to own it. I mean, I know, I know, it's twenty seven. It's twenty seventeen, and this this has been done many times in the past in press conferences. No one gives a shit about cars. People give a shit about Miyamoto showing up with a Zelda sword, okay? When <laughs> Jack Trenton tried, you know, I, I, I told the truck he doesn't over the than, over the yeah. shoulder. People unless give you a get shit the, about that. <laughs> unless you get the car for free when you buy the Xbox One X, no one will oh, care. Oh, please. Yeah, that that will never. That happen. is the only way you can get me to care. If you put a really shiny, beautiful car on stage. If it yeah. comes with the Xbox One, for but free. But again, though, the, the, the only, only reason, way, <laughs> the only reason why car games are part of the press conferences is because car games are super easy to develop, and there's and they could really showcase how powerful the graphics are. That is the only point that they're there. I get it, but I and I I know it's a popular genre, but I don't think it's popular enough where. You know, it, it appeals to being a part of your press conference. Because to me, cars just driving around on a slightly big map, to me, that does not showcase the the uh, the inter the intricacies of the hardware at its you know being pushed to its maximum level. To me, I'm not impressed with that at all. Even I don't care how realistic the rain is on on the freaking cars. It's just cars driving around on a, on a map. That's it. I want to see some explosions. I want to see some, you know. Michael Bay explosions. Well, no, no, no. Not just Michael Bay explosions, but I want to <laughs> see the game really pushing the hardware. I want to see it like on like a storytelling perspective of like, you know, the acting and the performances. And on top of that with the action and the explosions. You know, I, I just want something to really showcase what the graphics are capable of other than just because again i'm aware that the cars are a uh, car games are really easily showcaseable of the graphics it's going to look impressive because it's not that much to render in the game i want to see i want to see like a freaking game like witcher being run at that hardcore max settings and everything and see if it can 
stabilize that. That's what I'm interested in. Those are the type of games I'm interested oh, yeah. in. Seeing if they are, you know, I mean, able to uh, support that hardware without the game crashing or anything. I, I don't know if they ever explained this, but if if the Xbox One X has like settings, like you can find on like a PC, hmm. that you can adjust. Like, oh, if you don't want 4K, you can downscale it to 1080p high settings. Mm-hmm. Or like uh, 1440p, or like lower to like 720p, or whatever. Like if that's the case, that's cool. That'd be a cool agree. feature for the Xbox One X. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, but would it be enough to buy that. them? No. Nah. It, again, it goes back to the games. The Xbox One X yeah. needs first party, first party games that are being developed from the ground up with that technology and architecture in mind. That's the only way. That that's how consoles are being sold. Because if that's the case, mm-hmm. no one's going to give a shit, and people should are just should just buy a PC. <laughs> yeah, because there's no incentive. I, I, I buy a PC. I mean, like you can get the same experience about 4K gaming just by building your own PC. Yep. It's it's not as hard as people like to make it out to be, and it can just cost as about as much as an Xbox One X. Yeah. Exactly, and. You know, you all can, those games are going to go there anyway. Really, it is easy to get into that. It is. But, you know, it's like, I understand that people, like, I'm I'm a console gamer, and I understand that fidgeting around with, like, PCs and all that isn't necessarily exciting. But, you know, it's like, if, if I don't want to keep spending money on consoles, mm-hmm. I, I'd rather just have a one-for-all device that can... Not only go on the web, stream video, but can also just like I could upgrade in like a couple of years and not worry about games. I agree with that. Um, but then again, like the the game the the console market for Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo, uh, you know they're a big part of the company. I mean, apparently, Sony's division. Yeah. I mean, so, Sony's divisions, from what I heard, I mean, the, 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 their like, gaming industry, their gaming division was the only thing that was doing well. If the PlayStation 4 saved Sony from bankruptcy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you Whoa. know, so... But the thing Sony is... Sony alive uh, currently. Yeah. And I agree with you. I, 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 I wish there was a system out there where, you know, you can have, like, one, one console or one system that has everything on it. But then again, yeah. do, you, do you want... But then again, you're kind of losing out on some competition, though, because the competition is what makes them, makes them, uh, you know, compete and try to make, try to give the consumers the best deals. The reason why, you know, I, the reason why I think PlayStation's being Microsoft is because, is because of games like Uncharted and Last of Us and God of War and Days Gone, Spider Man. You know, Sony's really making these amazingly looking games that are, you know, developed with the pro in mind and that are exclusively just coming to the console. You know, and for the longest time, Microsoft had Halo and Gears, which a lot of people loved as well. You know, I I feel like that, because without the consoles competing with one another, we wouldn't have had a Halo or Gears or Uncharted and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Who knows? I, I mean... You are getting, I mean, console gaming will always be, like, relevant. Because, you know, people will want to buy a console that's just easy to hook up. And, you know, plug in and go. Plug and play. Whereas, like, with a PC, you have to, like, fidget around with settings. You have to buy all these parts. You got to build it. Unless you want to buy, like, one of those really overpriced, sometimes crappy gaming PCs. Mm-hmm. It, it's like you know, some people just don't want that, and you know, that's fine. You know, that's console gaming. Console gaming is for you at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I like video games at all. You know, I like Nintendo. I like Sony, and I I play some PC games here and there, and I like those. Yeah. And I do want all companies to succeed and do well. Mm-hmm. If if all of them fail or one succeeds and the rest fail, it's just not fun. It's, there's no competition. Well, yeah, if if they all fail, then yeah. we gamers all fail. You know, because we're not getting any yeah. games. You know, we're, there's, yeah. a, there's nothing being developed. And that would be disappointing. Well, not disappointing. That would be really upsetting. <laughs> yeah. A world without video I mean, games. Thankfully, we, 
Oh yeah, god. Yes, that would be a tough world. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean I, I I will say, like, thank God we're getting as much games as we are nowadays, because on the level of quality, the industry that we're getting them just, too. yeah, you yeah, know? we're getting them fast, and they're really good for the oh, most part. It, it, yeah. big, big, <laughs> <laughs> you can find some real turds yes. when they don't crash, or when they don't crash, actually work, or not mostly DLC. They're great. Yep. Yeah, exactly. For, for every I, I, Last of Us, there's an Aliens Colonial Marines that exists. So yeah, I, I finished that game the other night, and I'm like, eh, that game's all right. Really? <laughs> yeah. The other night. Yeah. A bit late a little to off party. topic, but it was like, yeah, it, it was an all right game. It was fun. <laughs> I, I would kind of call it like the same level as Breath of the Wild. It's a fun game, but not like the greatest game of all time. You, you sh- yeah, th- this is a uh, post all the bugs and everything. You should you should have seen what it was like when it first came out. I oh, got screwed I, over so I played bad, it man. with like some graphical glitches. There yeah. was one point where literally somebody fell through the world. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, and the guy, yeah. I could I could talk for hours about aliens clone marines, but um for a little side note though, did you guys hear about Atari? The breaking news that happened? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. Making, they're making a, a console. Model. <laughs> <laughs> a console. They're making a console. Man, I can't <laughs> wait to plug in my new Atari Twenty Six Hundred to play Pitfall again. <laughs> in, in 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 Bubsy, Bubsy's Godforsaken coming back. What four God. bits versus four K gaming? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Like, the match of the decade. Like, what, what do you guys think? Like, do you guys think like this system's gonna be like on the same level as like a Pro or 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 an Xbox One no. X or? Fuck no. It'll be lucky if it's even sixty-four bits. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I guess I think you have low expectations for Atari's comeback. Like, like I said on Twitter, this is the equivalent of an old man saying, I'm going to show you the you whippersnappers a real game, guys. Let me show you what I got in store, man. <laughs> Back in my I mean, day, Nintendo is basically... Or bitch, we only have four bitch in black and white. <laughs> I mean, despite what people think, like, at least Nintendo is still relevant, you know, even yeah. though, you know, we may not talk about their hardware, they still make games. Like, what has Atari done in the last 30 goddamn years? They've tried to make some games and failed miserably. <laughs> they <laughs> what they heard. did the Dragon Ball Z Budokai games and Budokai Tenkaichi oh, really? games. That was them? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they licensed those. They didn't develop those, though. Oh, well, yeah. They also developed the DBZ games, the Naruto games, the Sword Art games, and all the other Okay, games. I think they also did okay. work on the those Dragon Ball Z guy. games for the Game Boy Advance. And mm-hmm. yeah. after <laughs> that, bankruptcy disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Mobile games, and we're back to consoles, apparently. Well, yeah. I don't a, even know what they even have in store. <laughs> like, what is this console gonna now include? Eight bits and a non-joystick controller? Come I on, old man! Wrong. Like, nobody bought a Jaguar. This time, it will have two buttons. <laughs> and it'll come with Bubsy. I mean, Atari, Atari, when it came to consoles, they're irrelevant. Nobody cares in modern generation, and even those old, old school gamers, who the fuck cares about Atari? If you're an old school I, gamer, you're better off just plugging in your Atari 2600. I, I completely agree with you, Sam, but, <laughs> but god damn, am I still... I'm, I mean, I'm not. A, I agree with you. I don't. I don't care about Atari. I haven't heard their name in years. This is freaking. But, boring. I, but I have to admit, I have to be honest. I res, I respect that they're they're trying to make a comeback. I respect it. You, you have to. Admit, I'll you, respect you gotta that give, too. You got to give them some spunk that 
Yeah, you know, they're basically they, going they with the old man to, trying to be. Yeah, they're gonna put themselves they, in, even into they got greater guts debt. To enter <laughs> a, an environment where it's Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. Everyone's in HD. We don't know what the hell Nintendo's doing, but somehow it's working. Yes. 4K like, gaming yeah. VR. No, yeah. let's stick <laughs> up with the. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> with our damn Atari box, with our eight-bit games and whatnot. <laughs> hey, you whippersnapper! Do you remember me? I'm back, son. <laughs> if it's not, we're gonna make sure we don't make any of those damn AD games. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. Grandpa's <laughs> Grandpa's is off of, his office is met his case currently. Atari, Atari is essentially Fire Marshal Bill from Living Color. Let me show you something. <laughs> this is my new game <laughs> system. <laughs> sure it is, Grandpa. Sure it is. <laughs> Check out this game that I have. Let me show you something. Check out this video game. <laughs> Look, our greatest innovation. It has more colors. <laughs> <laughs> it has more colors than the Atari 2600. We went and from... Over all this time, we went from 64 bits to 124! <laughs> <laughs> it's a revolution! Uh, okay. we, have it, we have exclusives like Bubsy and... <laughs> no. Bubsy! <laughs> and Pong! <laughs> In and Pong, hey, hey, hey. Don't the, knock closest, Pong. Pong. And the closest really thing to high definition Pong. possible. I, I, I respect Pong. I will. I, I respect it, but I, I had to. <laughs> I had to. Like Honestly, dog. I play Pong. Still fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun game. It's basically virtual tennis. It's yeah. simple but fun. But um, no, yeah, but yeah. Like I said, Atari's I, making I, a comeback. Who knew? And I, I love it, and I, I hope they're successful just for the sake of competition. And uh, I doubt it. That we I, get a what the fuck news. I, I doubt it too. I still get the console again. Again, I'm, I'm hoping for the best for Atari. I, I hope they make a comeback. It'd be yeah. nice to have a little more competition in the market. So, something to aim for. Sell better than the Wii. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not better than yeah. Ouya. Yeah. That, that or the Xbox yeah, One. Fuck's it, Ouya. <laughs> no, but as a starting point, to, as a comeback. Yeah, definitely. If it's outsell the Wii U. Wii U. <laughs> outsell the Wii U. If you can't yeah. even beat the Wii U, just, just quit. Wii U just yeah. go back into retirement. <laughs> <laughs> or how, how about the Vita? The PlayStation Vita. <laughs> yeah. I think the Vita sold better than the Wii U. Uh, or was it the other way around? Uh, I can't yeah. tell. I can't remember. They were both yeah. terrible sellers. Yeah, they were both terrible, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they were both bad. So, so we outsold the Wii U in total sale units. Yeah. So, yeah, sell better than the Wii U. That's your starting point. That, that's your You goal. can make it sell past that. Than virtual boy. <laughs> you can make it past that, you're good. Just, just yeah. don't do a Virtual Boy or an ET. Please just don't those... crash the market again. <laughs> Yeah, just just Please, don't call it Jag don't, do it. don't call it Jaguar two. <laughs> don't call it Jaguar two. <laughs> so I'm waiting to say, just call it Atari. Gaming. Call it the Atari million. Dragon. Well, I I guess that that pretty much sums up uh, the E three uh, and Atari talk. <laughs> Let, let's go into the final topic: the the high dive uh, streaming service that that recently got announced. That's yeah. Taking a whack into the yes, uh, this launched like a market. couple. <laughs> yeah, this launched a couple days ago. I think as of this recording. A couple days ago. Yeah. As of this recording, out yeah. uh, by by the time we release this, will be old news. But It'll as the time of this player. recording, it's been a couple of days since it was released. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, my friend subscribed to it, and I was uh, able, lucky enough, to get a chance to use it, and I really like it. Um, I put a tweet up on my Twitter, just calling it like Sentai's equivalent to Funimation now, just mm -hmm. as a vessel for them to upload dubs, kind of maybe dump some simulcasts that aren't going to strike there. Is, uh, and, what is, uh, like some of the benefits, like, 
uh, comparing it to like the other streaming services, is it pretty much like identical to it, or is there something a little more? Does it have um, does it have anything of like a kicker to it? It gives you like an incentive no. to get it. Well, okay. If, if you're, you're a big best fan of bad dogs, anime movies, children who chase lost voices. I mean, that's also on Amazon too, so you're not really missing out. Ooh, <laughs> scene was like as an exclusive with Legend of the Galactic, Galactic Heroes or something. Yeah, Ooh, Guardian. Finally, that's uh, what what, that whatever it's called. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like so far, the exclusive simulcasts uh, are limited to what Sentai currently had airing this season, like Rene season three. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. So really right now, like Legend of the Galactic Heroes or dubs are the only real reason you're subscribing right now. Now, you know, summer season's almost here. We don't know what Sentai is going to do regarding what shows they license out to where to streaming services. Ooh, it uh, has two Godzilla sure movies. <laughs> yeah, really? really? Yeah. Godzilla huh. Monster Island, Godzilla vs. Gigan. Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. Godzilla versus Hidora. That's pretty dope. Godzilla. Oh, that's pretty cool. I- I'll give him credit on that I mean, one. It has Godzilla movies. Def- definitely <laughs> give him <laughs> points for that. <clears throat> I mean, my thing is like High Dive is is still early on, and I can understand like the faults of that because you're not getting that much exclusives. But if it gets the exclusives, I think it'd be worth the emission price currently. It's actually a really good deal because currently, right now, <laughs> by the way, this isn't sponsored or anything like that. By the way, it's a, it's like um, four bucks, right? Three ninety nine. If I yeah, read. currently it's three ninety nine a month. Plus, if you add on a stream, that's an extra dollar. So two simultaneous streams. So that's like five dollars, and you're locked in for two years with that price before it, you're forced to change to the higher <laughs> price. It's a really good deal, and you don't yeah. have to subscribe, but you're limited to just subs only. Which, if that's your thing, cool. I mean, there's plenty of sub... Well, there's not plenty of subtitle shows currently, so that's kind of... I wouldn't say that's really a good deal currently. For free, plus with ads, and I don't think you're streaming in HD. It's SD only, which is kind of... That's uh, without... So the, my thing that, is, is like... With, is that without... Yeah, that's, uh, with, that's without the... Okay. Yeah, that's without the subscription. The subscription... Yeah, the subscription is HD, HD video, dubs. Uh, you get access to simulcast and exclusives and no ads. So basically, you're basically getting the entire show without... I mean, for for a deal like that, four bucks a month, if you're just doing one person using that account, like, yeah, that's, that's a great deal. And unfortunately, currently, it's only web browser only. There are apps coming, as far as I know. But... I'm curious to see how this how this will play out. I'm thinking more or less I'm using this as like my go to Sentai dubs. Yeah. Uh, streaming yeah, service good. rather than like oh yeah, there's gonna be a lot of, there's gonna be a ton of exclusives on here. Sadly, mm-hmm. I think Amazon is still still good good chums with Sentai Filmworks. Especially with their service with their double paywall. The that crappy bullshit. anime strike service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, if, if, I mean, if Sentai is getting a good deal from working with Amazon, licensing their shows out to them, like, I guess, you know, it's business. Business is business. Yeah, fair, fair enough to them, but still mm. retarded. Yeah. Like the paywall thing, but uh, it sounds like an awesome deal and five, mostly five bucks for two. I mean, five. You know, that's not bad. Yep, five bucks a month for two years. Not plus bad. you get all the dubs and plus all the dubs and then there are OVA dubs, which yes, you could only buy exciting. through like the premium box set releases. Like that's insane. Like that's cool. Yeah. And I support that fully, but I would like look into it a little bit more before if you're cautious about it, I'd say give it seven days. There's a seven day free trial before they charge you. And if you don't like it, you can always just stick with the <laughs> regular subtitled subscription for free but uh it's currently there's not really a whole lot of simulcast for it which is kind of upsetting and who knows if it'll even get a lot however they do yeah. have exciting shows like uh like kamega kill oh they have big o 
Yeah, season one. Oh, big O. There, there's your selling point. Big O. Yeah, I watched got a bit of that in that HD and it looks phenomenal. I have to say that to go off on a little, little bit, Big O season one HD looks amazingly good. It's like Bebop and Outlaw Star quality. It is just a really well done remaster. Uh, it looks clean. It. it looks the colors pop out more. Uh, it's sharp. Uh, the sounds really good. It doesn't look as grainy as like previous broadcasts or mm -hmm. like old Bandai DVD releases. It's just really solid throughout. It, it sounds like the streaming service has. I from what I'm getting is uh, I would give it like a month or two to kind of kind of tread the waters a bit and see how it develops over time a little bit. But it sounds like a it has yeah. a it has potential of being a, a pretty good um, service. A yeah, I mean Haven. currently, I mean. I, I mean, here's the thing: is like if you if you're very curious about Sentai Filmworks dubs, I'd s subscribe to this in a heartbeat. Um, uh, if you're not a dub fan, I'd stick with just Crunchyroll or Hulu or like any other place. Uh, oh, I would not go with Amazon, even if they do have exclusive shows that are really worth watching. Mm -hmm. So so sad. Recreators this season is like the best show. But it's locked behind Amazon. Yeah. But still, and like Amazon, this season, Amazon Banner's this, charge is like a hundred bucks for uh, Prime is a hundred, and then you have to buy the subscription, which is five. Yeah, but which and no thanks, yeah, Amazon to customers. No thanks. <laughs> I'll just I'll just wait it out. Eventually, for Amazon, get on we video love road. money. Maybe buy maybe buy the release. <laughs> if it probably ever gets not. Light. Probably not. Yeah. 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 Well, still, I mean, <clears throat> so at the very least, uh, if Sentai does give High Dive some exclusive streaming content, that's really cool. And if it's really big profile shows of that season, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. It's really, really good. Like I said, if you're a dub fan, I recommend it. Uh, if you're not, stick with Crunchyroll or like any other streaming services that you can afford but the introduction price is just a real good deal like this isn't the final price I don't know when they're changing it to I don't know like whatever price they give it but currently for four bucks a month if you're just using one stream that's that's a steal I'd go for that in a heartbeat I, I would agree. But once again that, that'll call, that all comes down mm -hmm. to value and what you look for and what you want Honestly, I'm, honestly, I'm conflicted that. because that basically means another subscription. Yeah, yeah well, Sentai, yeah, Sentai certainly fair, doesn't want to work with Crunchyroll, so... Uh, but to be fair, though, it, 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 what was that? You know, yeah, well, with Crunchyroll and Funimation, I mean, the partnership. Yeah, that yeah. might be why Sentai is not really going for Crunchyroll nowadays. Uh, it, that seems to have been happening long before that relationship. Yeah. Um, but I will say, though, to be fair, uh, it is a lot cheaper than the other subscription services, I would say. Yeah, it's definitely a lot cheaper. Oh, so yeah. At, at least there, there's that, you know. Yeah, I mean, I it's, really cheap. Like yeah, it's really cheap. Yeah, I think it's the cheapest that I've heard comparing to the, Currently. the other. Yeah. Because that price, it's an introduction price point because the website launched just a few days ago. So that price point could shoot up to like Crunchyroll prices, like seven bucks a month or something like that. Grab mm -hmm. it while it's hot. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And when it raises the price, and you're locked in for, and that's, that's, that's the beauty is, is if you subscribe now, once again, this isn't paid or this isn't an ad or anything, but. If you subscribe, I mean, you're locked in for two years with that price. There's no upcharge fee or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You're locked in with or five five bucks a month, or whatever, depending on how many people are streaming on that service. I really like it so far. the The website's really nice. It's well designed. I guess I I'm not really a fan of the video player and how it looks. I haven't looked at the subtitles, so I have no clue how those those are. But maybe it could be something that uh. You do a review on it, maybe. Mm. Maybe you could write an article on it. Maybe. If you, uh, maybe maybe when it. it gets out of beta. Yeah, there you go. Fair enough. Yeah. 
I think I might look into it. I'm not sure yet, but it sounds promising. It has Godzilla films. That's yes, we know we heard you. <laughs> <laughs> I found like four Godzilla films for but streaming. But it does not have trucks. <laughs> no, we just need to play that clip that YouTube got rid of. No. On my channel. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> Prick. <laughs> but it was a masterpiece. Double brick. <laughs> 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 oh come on! One brick was enough. <laughs> I think. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on high dive. Uh, if you're interested, look into it. If Check you're not, I th like I said, I think I might look into that. That seems like a pretty good yeah. deal. Yeah, I, like I said, if you're into dubs, watch it. I, I'd get the subscription if you're just into interested in listening to more Sentai Filmworks dubs. But uh, besides that. If you're not interested in that, I'd wait. But that's down to your preferences and what you just in that one show, Galactic Heroes or whatever it's called. Uh, go for it. Uh, if you're not, I think mean, you can sign up and it's still free. So just not in HD. Hmm. But hmm. yeah, I think that's I think that does it for us. Yeah. All right. Well. With that, this concludes this episode of the Toonami Squad Podcast Sessions. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm your host, Eric Casey, also known as Erockstar5 on Twitter. <coughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sam. And Brick. I am... A, I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Silver, I make thumbs, and yada, yada, yada. Next. I'm at Pantro64. I'm Gundam Unicorn24 on Twitter, and boy, I'm worrying you know me on YouTube for Tsunami promos and gameplay. I, I, oh, I didn't. I thought I did minor. Wait, did I do my outro? Yeah. Sort yeah, of did. Totally did. Sure. It was cringy. Yes. It was cringy enough. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with it. It was cringy enough Perfectly, because you fucking assholes. <laughs> outros and intros. The worst that they could be. It's all it's part of the tradition. Play. <laughs> it's tradition to mess up the intro and outro. Oh, after <laughs> this, we need. I need to watch the intro again. <laughs> By the Actually, way, can I get a copy of the intro? <laughs> well, probably, but also silver. I would say for the thumb for this one, just call it cringe intro and uh, outro. You don't even need to put the topics. <laughs> cringe galore. Cringe galore. Perfect. All right. That concludes this episode of the Tsunami Squad podcast sessions. Dubbed the Cringe Lord. Uh, we will see you next time. All right. Adios. <laughs>